Football season is back, so I spent an afternoon preparing a freezer full of snacks while I watched the Dolphin game last week. I made 8 pounds of boneless chicken wings and 5 pounds of fries for Snack City to get me through the first half of the season. Keeping a freezer full of snacks makes game day platters like this one only minutes away. So let's get started. Here's how I make them. I like to begin with the fries. They need to take a short saltwater bath before being frozen, so starting with them allows me time to double up on work happening to make things move more quickly. Fill a large bowl with cold water and sprinkle in a decent amount of salt. The water should taste about as salty as the ocean. French fries are one of the easiest things that you can make for Snack City. All you need to do is cut up some potatoes, soak them, and then freeze. I'm doing 5 pounds of russet potatoes today and I decided to go with the classic fry shape. I don't bother peeling them, just wash off all of the dirt, slice one side to give myself a sturdy flat surface, and then cut down the length of the potato in fry sized increments. Then I rotate 90 degrees and repeat the cuts to get the fry shape. Toss those fries into the water bowl and finish cutting the remainder of the potatoes. Once you have finished all of the cutting, move the bowl off to the side and allow the potatoes to soak for 15 to 20 minutes or until you are ready for them again. Once the potatoes have soaked, you can drain away all of the water from the bowl and line a large sheet pan with paper towels. Dump out the potatoes onto the sheet pan and pat them dry to the best of your abilities. I chose to go with some chili garlic seasoned fries today, so I added a sprinkling of salt and then about 2 tablespoons or 16 grams each of garlic powder and dried ground ancho chilies. Any seasonings that you want to use will be great. Toss them around with your hands to distribute. Before these go into a vacuum bag to live in Snack City, they need to be flash frozen first. This will allow them to freeze individually by creating ice crystals on the exterior of each fry instead of freezing as one big clump. This step is non-negotiable. You have to do this. Flash freezing in a home kitchen simply means freezing something uncovered in a single layer so that it can freeze individually. Some people become such cry asses when I call this flash freezing and say that it's not. Look, I didn't make it up. Google it. That's what people call the process even if it's not at an industrial sized scale. It's almost like two things can have the same word but different definitions. Imagine introducing these people to the world of homonyms. It might break their brains. So clear out some space in your freezer, place those trays inside, and allow those fries to freeze until they are frozen solid. Next up, you can prepare your breading for the boneless wings. I like to use ground corn checks because I think they have good flavor, color, and are a gluten-free option for those that need it. Corn flakes or regular breadcrumbs are a fine substitute if you don't want to use the checks. To turn them into a breading, I pulverize them in a blender until they have reached a flour-like consistency. Pour that flour into a large shallow dish to prepare for later. One large box of corn checks will cover about 8 to 10 pounds of chicken, so I'll take a trip to my local Costco to stock up and use every ounce of my willpower to not buy the giant tub of M&Ms while I'm there. For this prep, I did 8 pounds or 3.6 kilograms of boneless skinless chicken breasts, and I cut them into 1 to 1 and a half inch chunks after trimming away any of the gross stuff. The recipe for these boneless wings is the exact same as the recipe I have for the popcorn chicken, except I just cut the pieces of chicken bigger. I like to set up a large dish to the side to place all of my cut chicken in to get it off of the cutting board and out of the way. Once you have finished all of your cutting, coat the chicken with 1 cup or 120 grams of cornstarch. This will help for a more even breading. If you don't have a big roasting pan like I'm using here, you can add the chicken to a large zip top bag, add in the cornstarch, and then shake it up to evenly distribute it. Just make sure that all the pieces of chicken have a coating of cornstarch on them. Next, you can crack 8 eggs into a bowl and beat them together to create an egg wash. For the breading, add about 4 cups or 500 grams of ground corn checks, 3.5 teaspoons or 20 grams of salt, 2 teaspoons or 8 grams of pepper, and 3 tablespoons or 24 grams of garlic powder into a large dish. Stir this until it is evenly distributed. Set up your breading station with your cornstarch coated chicken, the bowl of eggs, and a large shallow dish of the breading. Place the coated pieces into the eggs, mix it around with your hands to make sure that every piece of chicken is covered by the eggs. Sometimes the starch can make the pieces of chicken stick together, so try to separate all these pieces. Once the chicken is in the egg wash, transfer over a few pieces at a time to the breading dish. If you throw all of the pieces in at once, they're going to stick together and have surfaces that are without breading. Only doing a few pieces at a time gives you more space in the pan to shake and toss the pieces around to get optimal coverage. Once that chicken has been coated, you can add in more without the worry of any stickage. Continue with the breading process until all of the chicken is complete. Now with all the breaded chicken, you can either pre-cook it all or freeze it as it is raw. I'm not a huge fan of mixing raw chicken with the other citizens of Snack City to prevent cross-contamination. However, freezing them raw will help combat overcooking since you'll only have to cook them once when you are ready to eat. I prefer to cook them now all at this step, so to do this, I use the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Fill up the basket, spray it with a bit of oil, and move it into the air fryer for about 8-10 to 10 minutes. At around the 5-7 to 7 minute mark, I'll shake up the basket to move the pieces around. 
The time it takes for them to cook will depend on the size of your air fryer, how full the basket is, and how big or small your pieces are. I could tell you that I cooked mine for about 10 minutes a batch, but that could realistically mean nothing for you. You need to base your time off of each of those factors listed and use judgment to decide when yours are finished. Continue working your way through the chicken in batches until all of it has been cooked. As the pieces come out of the air fryer, place them onto a wire rack to cool. If you're doing a huge batch like me, it will be a good idea to store the cooled pieces of chicken in the fridge while the remainder cooks. Because it will take more than 4 or 5 batches, the pieces that were in the first couple of batches have to sit at room temperature for too long if you don't move them into the refrigerator. So after all the pieces have cooked and cooled, you can place them all onto one sheet pan to be flash frozen in the freezer. I'll usually let these freeze overnight and take care of the bagging in the morning. Since I found the Zwilling Fresh and Save vacuum system, everything that I make for Snack City goes into one of the vacuum seal bags. It's the perfect solution for meal prepping your snacks. It allows you to open and close the zip top bag to remove a snack size portion and still reseal using the vacuum pump. Taking the time to prep a boatload of snacks like I have done here takes a decent chunk of time and it would be a shame to lose all that effort because of poor storage conditions. The Zwilling Fresh and Save vacuum system is the sentry of snack and the frontline fighter against freezer burn. I've been using Zwilling knives for years and when they introduced me to the Fresh and Save system, it was a no brainer for doing what I do. The Fresh and Save vacuum starter set comes with a vacuum pump, one small and one large glass container, as well as two small and two medium bags. I asked the people at Zwilling to sprinkle over some sugar for all of you guys in the US, so if you use the code MEALPREP at checkout with your Fresh and Save vacuum starter set, they'll throw an extra 10 medium bags for free so you can get to building your own snack city. It's important to not overfill the bags because if you do, it's harder for the vacuum pump to create a tight seal. I probably overfilled my fry bag, but it's too late to change it now as they're already tucked in and ready for their slumber. Once everything is bagged up and vacuumed, into the freezer they go. Take a look at Snack City now. Have you ever seen anything more beautiful than that? Now let's talk about reheating. Just about everything I keep in Snack City gets reheated in the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 Celsius. I don't really time anything, I just keep an eye on it and pull it out when it's hot. I'm going to do a trio of boneless wings here, so I added about 30 pieces of chicken to the air fryer. I sprayed the tops with a bit of oil, and you don't need to do this step, but it does help them crisp up a bit. Like I mentioned earlier, the amount of time it takes them to cook is going to depend on your air fryer and how much you put in the basket. The more you put in, the longer it's going to take to cook, and you do not want to overcook these, so wash them closely, shake the basket about halfway through, and then pull them out when they are done, and no later. For cooking the fries, you can go straight from the freezer into the air fryer at 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 204 degrees Celsius. Now the flash freezing step was important because if you don't do that, these fries are all going to stick together. And you can see I even had some stickage with the flash freezing process. But just beat them up for a little bit and they'll come apart and you can place them individually into the air fryer. Spray the tops of the fries with a bit of oil and then move them into the heat. Every couple of minutes, you'll want to shake this basket around and check on the fries to make sure they're not burning, and then pull them out when they're done. It's probably going to take anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes, but you should use your best judgment to pull them out whenever they are finished. Now while the fries are cooking, I can use that time to sauce up some boneless wings. So to a large bowl, add a third or about 10 of the boneless wings, and then for the first one, we're going to do a buffalo boneless wing, which is the easiest one. All you need to do is pour over about two tablespoons or 30 grams of buffalo sauce, and then shake up that chicken and toss it around to coat evenly with the sauce. Dump the chicken out onto a platter and wipe the excess sauce from the bowl if you don't want it to mix with your next flavor. Add another 10 pieces of chicken to the bowl for your next saucing, which is going to be a honey barbecue boneless wing. Pour over about 1.75 tablespoons or 25 grams of barbecue sauce and then 1 teaspoon or 5 grams of honey and toss these until the sauce has fully coated the chicken. Make some room next to your buffalo wings and dump out the honey barbecue ones. The last flavor is going to be a maple sriracha boneless wing. To the bowl, add 1.75 tablespoons or about 25 grams of syrup and 1 teaspoon or 5 grams of sriracha. Stir that together to combine the two and then dump in the remainder of your chicken. Toss and shake so that it's evenly coated, and then place it next to your honey barbecue wings on the platter. To garnish these maple sriracha wings, I like to top them with a bit of sesame seeds and some green onions for flavor. Once your fries are finished, pull them from the air fryer and sprinkle over a light seasoning of salt. Place them on the plate next to your wings, and now you have yourself the perfect game day appetizer platter. Boneless buffalo wings, honey barbecue boneless wings, maple sriracha boneless wings, and some chili garlic fries. The cooked weight of my boneless wings was 2,660 grams, which means that these unsauced wings have about 211 calories per 100 gram serving. The fries are just plain potatoes with a bit of seasoning, so before you add any of the oil, you are looking at 116 calories per 100 gram serving. Stocking your freezer with a variety of options for your snacking needs is not only convenient, but it can also be a more calorie and macro friendly option. 
The recipe for the boneless wings and fries are linked in the description below. I've also included a link to the Zwilling Fresh and Safe vacuum set for you to check out as well. You can start to build your own snack city with these recipes today and slowly add on as time goes by. See you next week.